Hey everybody, Chillcraft here. I wanted to do a follow up to the leather working guide that I had kind of gone through and, um, you know, kind of worked out how to be super efficient with our money as we get from one to 300. A lot of you guys have provided a lot of feedback and we're really anticipating, um, you know, sort of like an advanced version of this guide that kind of went into the specializations. As I started working on this, I realized that I had a lot of different ideas on what I wanted to do. And as I incorporated those with uh, each of the different specializations, this became like a massive video. Um, so I'm working on getting the tribal leatherworking one done. Um, you'll see that after this video. And I'm basically going to separate each of the different specializations, um, giving some sort of feedback on you know, where to learn the different recipes and, and, and what uh, recipes are actually the best money makers. So with this guide, I wanted to go through a couple different things that I saw from the questions that were in the original guide and kind of work through my thoughts on leatherworking, um, how I find value after 300 and what I do with the, you know, um, numerous amounts of leather that I do have. So first things first, let's talk about our big money maker, the salt shakers. This is uh, an item that we're going to be able to get from our engineering friends and basically use this to refine uh, deep rock salt, which you basically will get off like earth and, and elementals and stuff like that into uh, refined deep rock salt. Now, when we use this salt shaker, we have a cooldown of every three days. So it's imperative that as you work through leatherworking, the goal is to get to leatherworking 250 as quickly as possible if you can. Now, I know that this is kind of counterintuitive to being super efficient. Uh, I don't want you guys buying a bunch of leather on the auction house right now. You know, use skinning. It, it should be your primary way of, of getting leather if possible. Uh, but make sure that you get this as quickly as possible and that you guys are using this every three days. There's been times where I've forgotten about uh, my cooldown for a day or two. And um, this uh, salt shaker, it when you refine the salt into uh, the deep rock salt, what's going to end up happening is um, this is really only good for the uh, cured rugged hide. Now, the cured rugged hide is basically gone up in value substantially. Um, when the game first came out and I was able to sell a couple of the cured rugged hides at 25 gold, and basically people weren't using this. I mean, you basically only needed one maybe for the devil sore um, legs, and there was no reason really to use this, but with the DM recipes coming out, um, this value has basically gone back up. I've been selling these for about 28 gold on Herod. So I basically just like hoarded a bunch of these in my bank waiting to see what would happen. And it, it did pay off and I was able to make a lot of money um, so far with these. And these are things that you should be doing every time that you can as quickly as possible. It's, it's not necessarily passive money because you have to do something. You have to remember that it's up every three days. Um, but there's a lot of gold to be made just with the salt shaker. So one of the feedbacks I got in the original video was that um, a lot of people weren't actually picking up skinning and they were able to just play the auction house, buy leather, and use that to level up leatherworking. So it took a little bit of time and um, investigation into sort of what value I'm seeing leather go for on the auction house and how much I would actually buy it to build a couple of these recipes. Now this isn't the true value like I had in the uh, cooking video, but these are what I call the max value. So these are the values that I would actually spend on buying a specific leather tier on the auction house. Now I'm gonna be specific to light, medium, heavy, thick, and rugged leather. Um, this isn't gonna go into any of the hides. So the first one is light leather. I have this valued at 15 silver. I wouldn't really buy it above this unless, you know, you're not taking skinning. Um, I don't see a lot of opportunities to make profit with light leather. It's really just basically used to kind of get through the, the first part of leveling up leather working. For medium leather, I have this between one silver to three silver. 
Now you can make a profit with this um, pretty, pretty substantially. I tried to grab everything as close to one silver as possible. I'll be going through the recipes that um, I've been using for this to make money. Heavy leather, I have it between two to three silver. Um, right now it's kind of an interesting time because as you see the periods of people sort of level up, um, there's more, I guess, demand for some of these mid-tier, like medium and heavy leather right now actually on the market than something like thick leather. Um, so even though this is the price that I would buy it on, I think that it's kind of hard to actually find heavy leather now um, in this range. I'll kind of explain this a little bit more in a second. For thick leather, you, I'll buy anything between five silver to seven silver for one piece. Uh, thick leather is, is probably the best bang for your buck that you're going to get for leather. Uh, the reason why is basically the Nightscape tunic. It's, you, you know, you can go all the way up to seven silver and you're still making a profit at vendor, which is kind of crazy. Um, we'll go into this a little bit further, but um, thick leather, once you can get to that tier, it's really good. Now, rugged leather, I have it set at seven silver. Um, this is kind of a complicated one because right now I don't see too much opportunity to um, make uh, money with this outside of like the high, high tier um, recipes. So uh, buying this for something to flip isn't uh, the best uh, opportunity. Right now I'm just holding on rugged leather and I'm not actually using them in any recipes. Uh, that I can't make immediately. I'll talk about that in a second. So which recipes should you be trying to get? So there's a couple recipes that if you get, and I'll talk about the, the actual values and go through the math in a second, you'll be making money at each of the tiers. So for the light leather tier, I have the fine leather boots. Now this is a drop and um, the way that I actually make money with this is that I'm doing this completely through vendoring. So the fine leather boots is probably the best recipe for actual um, light leather. It requires two coarse thread and seven light leather to make. Now this is a drop. You won't be able to pick this up at any vendor. You can usually get this for pretty cheap. There isn't a specific place that um, you can actually get it from. I think the highest value in terms of uh, drop rate is the surf crawlers in Duratar 1.4%, um, but it drops off a lot of little things um, at different rates. So uh, I recommend just checking this out on the auction house and if you can get it, um, it's a good way to clear a lot of your leather. Um, the next one that I use is the dark leather shoulders. So the dark leather shoulders is another uh, drop that is really good because it's you know, one of the first set of shoulders that you can get in the game that is completely agility based. And there's a lot of low classes that are really looking for this. Um, the, the, the thing with this recipe is that we do require a potion. So to make this, you need um, 12 medium leather, an elixir of lesser agility, gray dye, and two fine thread. So with the elixirs of lesser agility, um, it uses one wild steel bloom and one swift whistle. And you aren't gonna find these at a really good value. Um, I'm pricing these at anything below 50 silver. I'll probably buy one of these. I've been able to get a bunch at 15 just by being patient and seeing people outbid one another. So if you weren't looking to get this, um, the drop chance is pretty bad. It's like 0.8% off of Blink Dragons and Ashenvale. Um, you can get this at other places in, in various dungeons like uh, Shadowfin Keep and Razorfin Crawl. Um, but it's worth trying to keep an eye on this price. I actually got this just on a bid. Um, sometimes people won't actually be selling this. Um, people won't actually be buying this. So you won't have a lot of competitions on the bids. Um, so that's kind of my strategy for getting this. So the next recipe you're going to want to get is the Deviate Scale Belt. Now you can get this through a quest reward for running Wailing Caverns on the Horde side. If you didn't run Wailing Caverns, you didn't select it, or 
um, you know, you're on the Alliance, you're, your only sort of um, way of getting this is actually through an auction house, whether it's the neutral auction house or uh, the Horda auction house. So the quest that you want to get to be able to get this um, recipe is Deviate Eridiction. And basically, uh, you're going to get this from a Night Elf that's located in the eye of the skull that's just like the entrance place for Wailing Caverns. Um, her name is Ebru. And she's going to give you this quest and it's going to require that you go ahead and kill um, four different versions of the Deviates that are inside um, the Wailing Caverns for a total of about 28 different mobs you got to kill. And he, they give you basically like a, a set of different items that you can select. So make sure you go ahead and select the pattern for the Deviate Scale Belt. It's going to be one of the items that you're going to craft a lot in the next upcoming phase. And you're going to be able to make really good money if you can get your hands on some of those uh, perfect Deviate Scales. The next recipe is a Horde specific recipe called the Raptor Hide Harness. Now, there is an equivalent to this, but it doesn't make as much money on the Alliance side, so I'm not going to necessarily uh, put it out here. So the Raptor Hide Harness is a pattern that you can get from a vendor. His name is Tanik, and he's in the little house below the inn in um, the Rathi Highlands location. So this recipe is pretty interesting because the main use is not necessarily heavy leather. It's actually Raptor Hides. So we'll get to that topic in a second when we go through some of the math on that. Now the next recipe that you want to make sure you guys pick up, and this is kind of like the, the Deviate Scale Belt, that it's going to be super important for money making on the leatherworking side at least in the next phase, is the Barbaric Bracers. So this is a pattern that's also sold at the vendor. It's both on the Horde and the Alliance side. And you actually have to get it from a, an additional city that you're probably not used to going. Uh, at least on, on the Horde, it, it's get delivered by uh, Joseph Moore in Undercity. And on the, on the Alliance side, it is available through Scenarion in their Nasus. So now that we kind of went over the different um, recipes that I think are important as you are kind of working through leatherworking to kind of distinguish yourself from other leather workers, I'm going to go and talk about the different tiers and incorporate some of those max prices that we talked about and how I'm actually making money across different tiers with certain recipes that I think are uh, you, your most valuable recipes. So the, the recipes that I'm going to be covering through today are going to be like a mix of both vendoring and using the auction house. So you can kind of get a feel of whatever you feel more comfortable with, you kind of play with um, that market. So for the light leather, um, I'm going to be using fine leather boots. And um, this, this recipe, uh, as, I, as I said before, I can actually get it for um, 20 copper, the mats. The max price I had set at 15 copper. So if I use seven pieces of light leather, it's gonna send me at one silver and five copper. Now I can vendor this for two silver and 43 copper, giving me a profit of one silver and 18 copper. Now this isn't necessarily a lot, but when you compare it to some of the profit gains that I have with cooking, it's kind of equivalent. And it's a good way to kind of burn through some of the light leather. So with the medium tier, I either use the dark leather tunic or the dark leather shoulders. Um, so this is a really good tier for making money. If we take a look at the dark leather tunic, the mats are going to cost you four silver, 50 copper. If I get the max price at one silver and I'm using six pieces of medium leather, it's going to send me back six silver. The auction house, I will always put this for about 45 silver and it's I'll put like about two a day and these will sell. Um, the profit I'm getting here is about 34 silver and 50 copper, which is pretty substantial. Now, if you are kind of working through some of those different max prices, let's say your max price is two silver instead. Um, when you do the math, what you get in terms of profit, it's going to go down to 28 silver and 50 copper. And if you go on the high tier of what I said, you know, you can go to with a three silver for a medium leather, um, you're looking at a profit of 22 silver and 50 copper. You're selling that on the auction house of 45 silver. Now, of course, this doesn't take into account like auction house fees, depending on, you know, the time threshold you're setting it or if people are undercutting you. Um, but this is what I usually put on the market. I leave it there and I usually get these um, sold at least one of the two. 
and I'll make that money. Now with the dark leather shoulders, um, I do a very similar concept. I always put two on the market and basically leave it there and usually it gets sold uh, pretty quickly. Um, when it comes to this, I have to take into the consideration for the lesser agility pot. Now the mats are five silver and 50 copper. For the lesser agility pot, it's made me think about using my alt to level up uh, alchemy just because it's it's so much money i really think alchemy might even be uh, the king of making money and so it's kind of like my next my next um adventure is kind of like diving into alchemy but i will buy a lesser jelly pot anything under 50 silver i've been lucky i've been able to get a couple you know you see people undercutting each other and you just wait and you get i've gotten them at 15 silver um, but my threshold is 50 silver. Now let's take a look at the math behind that. Um, if I get the max price at one silver for my medium leather, that's going to send me back six silver. And I will auction these at one gold. Um, now that will give me a profit about 38 gold and 50 copper. So it is comparative to um, the dark leather tunic and it's also dependent on how much you're able to get that uh, agility pot for if we are um, doing the medium leather at two silver we're going to have a total profit at 32 silver and 50 copper and if we're on the high end and we actually have um, a medium uh, leather at three silver we're going to go ahead with a total profit of 26 silver and 50 copper so you're able to see, you know, a rough baseline of where the money's going to be and, you know, where to start feeling comfortable about buying stuff on the auction house and uh, how you can make a profit. Every day I'll go ahead and try to put at least two of these on the market. Now for heavy leather, I use an actual, I actually use the vendor game. Um, there's a couple that I've seen with the ammo bags, the heavy leather ammo bags but I've actually seen that this is a really easy way to make a lot of money and it's very quick. So I use the Raptor Hide Harness recipe and uh, for the mats for that are two silver. Now it requires that I get Raptor Hides. Now these are selling for super cheap. I'm almost getting them at the price people are selling it to the vendor. And so anything under two silver and 25 copper I'll buy. The vendor price is two silver and eight copper. So you're getting it like ridiculously cheap. Six of those will set me at 13 silver and 50 copper. If I'm buying my heavy leather at two silver, it's gonna send me back another eight silver. I'm gonna vendor these for close to 31 silver and I get a total profit of seven silver and 46 copper. Now, if I go ahead and have a higher cost on my heavy leather and I have it at three silver each, I'm gonna have a profit at three silver and 46 copper. Now that, that isn't a lot. Um, and especially when you compare with how much money you're making on the medium leather in the auction house, it's just a different game. If you're using the vendor, of course it's gonna be cheaper. Um, but if you have a lot of, of heavy leather, it might be worth uh, just you know using this method here. Now, one thing I did the other day is I kept an eye out on the price of heavy leather and I noticed that there was no heavy leather in the auction house. So I put it stacked for gold, which is a lot higher than I would actually buy it for. And it sold immediately. I put it for a little bit more. I was able to sell it for one gold and 35 silver before people started noticing and putting undercutting me like crazy. Um, but I basically sold almost all my stacks of heavy leather the other day. And so I messaged a couple of people that were buying my, my, my heavy leather and they said they were using it for Thorium Brotherhood rep. So you might actually benefit more from, um, if you want to use the auction house for heavy leather, I would suggest just selling the leather directly on the auction house and seeing if you can get that, that market value for um, rep grinding that people are using it for. All right, let's talk about the king. Let's talk about the Nightscape tunic. Now, Nightscape tunic is probably my favorite um, material to make right now with a leather working. There's so much thick leather out there on the market that you can really buy this all the way up from five silver all the way to seven silver each, and you're still making uh, money. Now, this is 
vendoring and people are buying this on the auction now. So I'm gonna actually compare the two values and you'll see how much you can make. So the mats are four silver. Um, these are the silken threads that you will use to make the tunic. If I'm getting the tunic for five silver each, um, it's gonna send me back 35 silver. I can vendor this for 59 silver and 71 copper, giving me a profit of 20 silver and 71 copper. Now, I will auction this out at one gold instead. Um, you aren't able, you know, you're gonna make a lot more tunics than you can actually throw in the auction house and people will buy. Um, but for some reason, I noticed that people will buy this more than the headbands and you can sell it at, you know, close to 1G. Uh, maybe you'll have to undercut a couple people a little bit, sell it at like 95, 94 silver. Um, but if you sell it at one gold, you're getting a profit at 65 silver. Now, if you go ahead and buy the um, thick leather at six silver each, you're gonna be getting a profit at the vendor at only 13 silver and 71 copper. Now, if you use the auction house and you're selling at that same rate of one gold, you're gonna have a profit of 58 silver. You can go up all the way to seven silver per piece at the vendor, this will give you six silver and 71 copper. And at the auction house, this will give you 51 silver. So with the tunics, I have so much that I'll like, like the uh, dark leather tunics, I'll throw them on the auction house, probably one or two, they'll get bought and the rest I'll just go ahead and vendor. Now rugged leather is a pretty interesting market. I, I don't think I've explored it enough to give too much um, insight. But from what I've seen, the best value are the armor kits. Now, I've been able to sell armor kits for about 45 silver. And when you think about the max price, these are, I'm selling, I'm trying to buy these at, you know, seven silver or less. And I'm able to basically make about 10, pro, uh, 10 silver profit on each one. Now, that's, that's okay, you know, comparing it to other values out there. Um, I've, I've basically been, you know, using to build my double sewer uh, set recently. So a lot of my rugged leather has been gone to that. Um, so there's potential there for holding on to your rugged leather and maybe using it for that or the height of the wild or some other um, unique set for some of the artisan uh, specialties. So hopefully this video gave you some idea on how to make money. Um, taking into value some of the thresholds that I feel I'm comfortable with buying each of the individual leathers and you know depending on your individual server how the market looks you can actually make killing with leather working a lot of people are buying this stuff and the best thing about leather working is the low cost materials you're not making a big risk you're not buying any of those crazy you know blacksmithing ingots uh, leather working is a very safe profession to choose and it's a very safe way to make a lot of money. So go ahead, you know, shake that salt, you know, build those, those tunics and uh, make that money. My next uh, video will be kind of going into the topic of grinding. Um, I see a lot of people asking me about like, you know, what's my spot for grinding. And there's a lot of videos out there with a lot of, I think like inflated values you're you know putting numbers out there that you know you don't actually get when you actually try to run the farm so i'll be going through that in my next video and then i'll follow up with um, the rest of the specialization on leatherworking so with that chill craft i'm out thanks for checking this out